How many of you know that when people are hungry for God, He's the only God that feeds you and leaves you more hungry. The more you have from Him, the hungrier you get. If you live of the flesh, you get full of yourself and you don't have room for anything else. But we give God honor and we give Him all the praise. Can you put your hands together for God's angel and messenger of this house? Prophet Leon and Esther Lee. Can you just bless God for them? Yes. Bless the Lord for them. We bless you, Jesus. We give you the glory for them. Hallelujah. Just so awesome. Just so awesome. It's so awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then... Uh, the Lord has done a lot of things over these two days. So tonight is activation night. Amen. Amen. We got to believe God that when you receive, you got to apply. Otherwise, you might as well just gone to a university over the week and got the same stuff. The difference between us and any institution of learning is that we have the evidence of God. And if you're at the university and you're studying to be a doctor, you still got to wait for the evidence. But when we come into the presence of God, the evidence is readily available. Amen. And that's why when we teach, we validate a man. But when God shows up, we validate God. Because nobody can argue with evidence of God. You are God's greatest evidence in the earth that Jesus is raised from the dead. Because who could have changed you? No rehab could make you look so good. I promise you. No. I promise you that the Lord has done certain things that I felt even today when I left Krugersdorp. God is busy with the work in your vineyard in another way. And I want to speak to us about the waves of the Spirit of God and the wave you are in right now. Because if you don't understand what God is doing, you can oppose it without being malicious. Just because you don't understand it. Amen? Now the book of Acts is full of the waves of the Spirit of God. And with every wave, He introduced something different to build the church from one level to the other. So I want to just basically look at, you see, every time the Holy Spirit came upon a person, man, I can feel the intimacy of the Lord here. You know, it's in intimacy that God produces, not in knowledge. When there's intimacy, I became a father. Amen. I don't have knowledge that made me a father. I have an intimate relationship with my wife that gave me two sons. And then when those two sons were born and they found their wives, they promoted me to grandpa. Now I have seven grandchildren and Daniel is the first boy. To think that Brenton gave Daniel the name Daniel, which is the name of my daddy. My dad's names is Daniel, James, John, Goldman. In Hebrew, it would have been Daniel, Yochanan for John, and Jacob for James. Which means those three names in my daddy mean simply, I'm a judge of God, but I have grace in me. And I will also make sure that I will not leave God until He blesses me. And therefore, the surname speaks for itself. When you do those three things, you will be Goldman. Okay. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> So I have seven granddaughters and all, every time there's a movement of God, there is an elevation of God. That's why you see when you come from grade one and you get to grade two, you have to pass some examination before you can go to the next level. The levels of God is no different, but you must be able to discern them. Otherwise you will, some people call a revival, a revival when it's just restoration. Because when we leave things that God did and we're not passionate about them anymore, God, before He can bring revival, He must restore the stuff you were passionate about before He can take you there. That's why in our educational system, unfortunately, we study to pass, but we don't study to become. 
Somebody can ask me about unicellular organisms now at the age of 66, and I'll speak to you about an amoeba or a hydra, which I did, I don't know when ago. Because I never went to school to study to pass. I went to school to become something. If you follow Jesus, you will become somebody. Follow me and I will make you. It's not follow me and just be a member. No, I'm going to make you something. For Peter, I made him a fisher of men. For you, Neville, I might do something different. But for you and every one of you, I've got a plan. You can't make something if you haven't got a design for it. I wish they never taught us Western thinking. In an Eastern book. <laughs> So we lose the mind of God and we become church people instead of relationally building with God. And so we oppose moves of God because we still stuck into a religious movement. You know, as Jews, uh, Jews never come to church without an offering. They never, you can't come to the synagogue without an offering. Because your offering reflects your appreciation of what God did for you. It's got nothing to do with the law. It's got, it's got to do with appreciation. How can I come to God, David will say, this 15-year-old that made a nation become a nation. 15 years old, you are now 70. You still haven't even got one soul that you can call a son. Do you understand? Because the fact is you got used to attending church. We, God doesn't have members in His body who are not disciples. We are all disciples of Christ. We are followers of Christ. Amen. So when you look at the Lord and what He does and the way He does things, David says, I cannot come to you with something that doesn't cost me. It cost you your time to make me the king. How can I come to you and somebody begs me to give my money to you? For heaven's sake, it makes God cheap. Imagine God is a multi-billionaire. He's begging you for your two rand. That's why the Jews don't believe we are saved. Because the covenant of God is wealth. To confirm His covenant, He gives you the ability to create wealth. And when you every time have this theology of the poorer they look, the more humble they are, it's so deceptive. You would never hang out with Abraham in your time. Imagine Abraham was so blessed of God. Abraham could tell Lot after he got him out of captivity and says, listen, I'm tired now of us arguing about stuff. Even as my nephew, check the land. What do you need? Just take it and move. <laughs> Just get out of our face. <laughs> and he takes the best land. You and I can't even give away a watch. Do you know what I mean? Oh, this is the only thing I have, really. <laughs> No, it's because you don't understand abundance of life. We don't do stuff for money. We do stuff because of the God who loves us, who cares for us. When nobody shows up for you, He shows up. When nobody thinks you are valuable, He believes in you. When nobody chooses you, He goes out of His way to make a way where there seems to be no way. He is the God I want to give my life to. And if I give my life to Him, my money, everything belongs to Him. That's why, I don't know why I'm here in this space, but in any case, let's see how we go. That's why Jesus says to a woman with a might, it's not her money. He says, you see, this woman is more blessed, and he got excited with joy. He says, Peter, James, John, get close, guys. Check this woman. She gave everything a might. And these other folk gave out of their abundance. What was he saying? He's saying, she believes that I'm worth all she possesses. These other guys have an appendage called Christianity, called Christ. This woman will be more blessed because everything she thinks about me is all about me. Somebody just say amen. amen. You see, each wave, each movement of God contributes to something bigger than the previous movement. Shaping the destiny of many people. Go to that favorite scripture while I go to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You see, when you meet Jesus, for you to drive, to ride a wave, there's no wave in shallow waters. You can't put the surfer on shallow waters, man. You go to a big, long board for ankle deep water. You're going nowhere. 
You, you, that, that, that wave can't even take your weight. It can't even take the board. You're still trying to get up. You're already sinking. And you're not even Peter. <laughs> you see, when Jesus says, launch out into the deep, what is he saying? He's saying the wave that you ride is not in shallow waters of prayer. It's not in shallow waters of the word. It's not in shallow waters of church. It's not in shallow waters of business or fellowship. There's no revival in shallowness. There is no revival in shallowness. Uh, I, I still pray the same prayers I prayed when I got saved. My goodness, is, has he never given you another revelation? I remember when I played football, Prophet Leon. You know, if you're a Christian in a soccer team, they know you're the guy that must pray for everything. You know what I mean? And then we're late. The referee is blowing three times. We're still getting dressed. So the guy said, let's just quickly pray. You know, this kind of thing. Let's just quickly. But they want to get religious. And I'll never forget, I said to my cousin who was part of the team, I said, hey, Aubrey, pray so long. I'm just getting my boots ready, man. Just pray so long. And he prayed. He get, he, he, <laughs> we all down like us. I just hear him say, for what we are about to receive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked at him. I said, you need to get saved, bro. <laughs> he says, that's the only prayer I know it is. For what? So I said, we're going to lose today. <laughs> And you got to be thankful. <laughs> you see, in Acts chapter 1, let's start with the basics. I'm going to go through just, there's about nine or eight waves of the Spirit in the book of Acts. And each one has a different outcome. I just want to just lay a foundation. I want to deal with the third wave, the fourth wave that you are in. It's the wave of deliverance. And if you understand it, you will get your freedom. Amen. Amen. You see in Acts chapter 1, verse, let's read verse 7 and 8 rather. Because some people get distracted about things that is not relevant. He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father said by His own authority. I wish Jesus was just alive to say this. We're so worried about when is the end coming. Listen, He's coming whether you like it or not. But our job is to get people into the kingdom. Than to worry about when is he coming. He's coming, folk. Jesus is returning. Doesn't make any difference what my theology would be. He's coming. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is such a well-known portion of scripture. I just want to unpack it a little bit. The Spirit of God will come upon me and I will receive power. So when the Holy Ghost has come upon me, I should have a manifestation of His presence with the evidence of power. That word power there is the word, you, you have great word in this church. Dunamis has about eight different characteristics. One of them is moral excellence. In other words, the Holy Ghost does not move with rude people. People who have no manners will never have power. People who can't love other people. My goodness, they just in a golf club. Looking for somebody to say, great shot. But you shall receive power. And when the power comes upon you, you should be testifying about the reality of who Jesus is. You will be my witnesses. The word witness there means you are willing to lay down your life for this gospel. You are willing to kind of be persecuted for this message. Witness is the word martyr. That means the Holy Ghost, when, when Jesus says the Holy Ghost will testify about me. You know what that word testify there means? Same word. In other words, the Holy Ghost is saying, I'm prepared to lay down my will for His will to be done. That is the Son. I will testify about, He will testify about me. So Jesus says, when the Holy Ghost comes, you got to work with the Spirit of God in order to glorify Jesus. You can't just testify He saved me. You need to be able to say He's Lord by the Spirit of God. 
Because if the Holy Ghost is upon you, you will never curse Jesus and His church. Never. But you will be my witness. But the third thing is, a movement is created in your life when the Holy Ghost comes on you. Not speaking just in tongues, folk. To speak in other tongues is my prayer life. He who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men but to God. And he edifies himself. If you understand the power of the spirit language, you will never wait for somebody to jack you up. You will come edified to the house of God. Ready not to be blessed but to bless. Because you don't need somebody to inject you about your life in Christ. You've come with an injection out of the prayer place. You've come with the fire to the house of God. You've come with the passion to the house of God. You've come expecting God to say to you, who can you pray for? Who can you lift up? Amen. And you know, when you are able to do that, you will preserve the man of God in your house and the woman of God that God chose. You will not exhaust them. You will compliment them. Amen. Now listen. So a movement is created. A prophet. There are three characteristics that are revealed in scripture. Before a movement is birthed. Number one is persecution. You notice something? The more people persecute us, the more they make us grow. The more negative they are about us, the better. Because that pushes exponential growth. I remember I was battling to see when are we going to take out the movie house and when are we going from the school. It's until the day somebody wrote a 40-page document and entitled it, Pastor Goldman, Demon of the City. <laughs> and then I'm walking with my son into the hospital. I get into the lift. Oh, wonderful posters. My face on it, Demon of the City. And guess what? Sinners never do that. It is disgruntled saints, offended children of God who has been taken captive by the devil to do his work in the house of God. And may God help you that you're not that person. Amen. Amen. Bold in the kingdom. If you don't understand me, wait for the revelation of God, but say, God, I don't understand it, but I'm putting my shoulder to the wheel. Why? Because I don't know his preaching. I know him as a person. I know his character. I know that he's not malicious. He's not doing this to destroy us. He's doing this to take us somewhere. How can you know the man of God for so many years and let the devil use you to encourage lies of 30 years of faithfulness that he gave you? How is it possible? You know why? You haven't been in the kingdom of darkness because you were ignorant that you were in the kingdom of darkness with a nature that's self-centered. So you come into the church with that self-centered approach, being about me. That's why the Holy Ghost has got to work hard to get the carnality out of you in order to have Him glorify Jesus. So the first thing that happens in every move of the Spirit of God is persecution. And whenever there was persecution, the church is in the upper room for 10 days. 10 days. Why were they in the upper room for 10 days in Mark's house? Because they were threatened by Jews, Pharisees and scribes. So they pray for 10 days out of fear in an upper room. And then the power. Persecution, prayer, the power. And when they're busy praying in the upper room, there is a noise in the upper room. And the first wave of the Holy Ghost comes from persecution, prayer, and power. And the moment the Holy Ghost comes onto the scene in the first wave, what did he do with centurion? Nothing different. In the first wave of the Spirit of God, he comes and he establishes administration. The pouring out of the Holy Ghost, evangelism, the apostolic graces in the church, the prophetic graces in the church. They pray in the upper room in revelation to what? What Joel the prophet said. So the prophetic characters in the upper room in prayer. The apostolic graces in the upper room in prayer. Because the apostles are there fulfilling the prophecy of Joel. And then the, the first gift that comes into that first wave is what? Peter. 
evangelism. And Peter gets up as an apostle to preach and 3,000 people come into the kingdom. The first wave is setting the character of the fivefold grace gifts of the Messiah in the church. And it's not one individual, it's an apostolic church. It's a prophetic church. It is an evangelical church. It is a pastoral church. It is a teaching church. So if you meet any one of us, you will meet an apostolic grace in us. If you meet any one of us, you will meet a prophetic grace in us. If you meet any one of us, you will meet the ascend the Messiah's fivefold gifts in his church. So God takes centurion and he puts all of those things in place. And you're only down here. You're just in Jerusalem. And then he comes. Hey. And he comes with giving us some insight. You see, when a church becomes irrelevant, it's because we have not discerned the shift of the Holy Spirit. We like yesterday's stuff and we oppose the next move. Every new wave of God is opposed by the previous wave. Did you know when you were 16, my age group, you had your own songs, isn't it? You think your songs are still relevant? No, then just get cool. Shift. Shift the mind and mind the shift. <laughs> when the church becomes irrelevant, we have not produced new leaders. We have a lot of Mugabe's in the church. Eight degrees, not honorary degrees, studied degrees, and left behind nothing but a war. We have forgotten there's a new generation rising up. Moses, God wasn't even using euphemism in his language. Imagine we would say, your father passed away. Uh, so sorry to have to say, no, God comes to Joshua like this. Joshua, Moses is dead. Get ready. <laughs> Imagine God says that. <laughs> Your wonderful friend you prayed with every day. You remember those years, the, the, the times that you spent 40 days up here with me? He's dead. You next. No, I haven't got Aaron in mind. And I also don't have Miriam in my mind because they, never, they were never hanging out with Moses in the place of persecution, prayer, and power. But you were hanging out with him. When everybody left, you stayed in the mountain. When the church was busy with idol worship, you stayed in the mountain. When you were up here, you knew the difference between the sound of praise and the sound of war and the sound of deception. You knew that sound. You knew that sound. I cannot have somebody who occupies the sanctuary but doesn't know to discern the sound of the movements of God. That's why when the Holy Ghost comes in that first wave, a sound, not a language, a sound. The heaven's voice has a sound. Jews never into Jesus never introduced himself like this. Hey Peter, I'm Jesus. No, he doesn't. He just said, Lord, is that to you? It is I. Why? Anybody can say it is I. What makes the difference between your it is I and his it is I, the sound of his voice. I don't have to ask Roji, is that you love? In 41 years, I know it's her. Even if he just breathes, I know it's her. Why? There's a sound. With My next thing I want to say, with every move of the Spirit came new people, new ideas new passion, new divine strategies, greater results. Why? Every generation has its own language, has its own culture. And if you're fishing in a particular tank, don't come with sardines for sharks. You know, get them a whole fish. Your greatest resistance to the new is old mindsets stuck to what worked yesterday. With every move, 
came new manifestations of the Spirit. Let me go straight in there and I want us to trust God. Amen. You see, the first wave introduced structure. So Centurion moves with, a, with Prophet Leon into a pioneering environment and you're going nowhere but establishing things. And now that they are established, the next wave. The next wave doesn't come with tongues and interpretation because the first wave had already tongues and interpretation. I do not understand when we are now speaking in other tongues and we are excited, we call it revival. No, we've always had that. So revival is for dead people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, read, oh, just read your Bible, folks. It's, it's, it's easier to preach when you know. <laughs> revival is when God comes and says, you killed something that was always living. And I want to just bring you a new passion, but I got something more than this. That's why what happened on the day of Pentecost is nothing in comparison to what is about to happen in our time. The church was born with fire, but this child is growing up, will have a lot of fire. This child is going to move with the fire of God. Why? Because the first wave is the tabernacle in the wilderness. The first wave. Do you notice what the first wave brings? Fire. What was on the tabernacle in the night? Fire. Uh-huh. And with tongues, expression. The prayer life. Because you can't come into the tabernacle and not meet God. Why do you want to be at the wash basin? Hello. Just want to clean myself up, God. Just want to brush my teeth. But I don't want to go into the holy of holies. Where our intimacy and our fellowship is like we have tonight. Now watch. But the second wave shook foundations. If you take Acts chapter 4 verse 4, look at, the, look at those three principles quickly. First persecution, then prayer, and then power. Right? That's why I never, some people thought I had become like cold. Because I never took persecution like, they don't like me. Yes, they don't like you. You'll be naive to think everybody loves you. I mean, Judas' name is not Judas. It's Yehuda, meaning the one who is close to me betrays me. So King James just decided we can't give him a, a Jewish name. This makes it easier just to call him Judah. Even Ju <laughs> the book of Jude is not Jude. It's actually Yehuda. <laughs> the book of intimacy with God right and the book of praise really but nevertheless when they the bible says these guys cast out not the devil they moved from the next wave with healing somebody at the temple guy sits at the temple he can't walk he's paralyzed isn't it amazing the moments the centurion moved into the supernatural power of god they were resisted not because somebody didn't get healed, but what kind of church is this with this young dude with long hair, with a ponytail, coming to say God can do this stuff. I wonder if this kid on the block is a new kid on the block. I wonder if this kid has what it takes. You know what an indictment that is to God to speak to a 15-year-old like David and say, take out Goliath and you judging the 15-year-old and you're not realizing that you're touching the hand of God and you're touching something that's bigger than you and I. Because you see the boy, God sees himself in the boy. He is in Christ reconciling the world to himself. You got to be so careful that you do not put an age to the glory. Listen. So when they get arrested, they get arrested for a miracle. Oh. But the Bible says in spite of that, the second wave brought 5,000 men. Why men? Because headship is with a man. There's three levels of leadership in the second wave. Headship, leadership, and followership. You can't have leadership until you have headship. That's why Jesus is not the leader of the body. 
is the head of the body. Now in the Bible it says he's a leader. Headship is a very powerful thing. It means I take responsibility. Why did the Holy Ghost take 5,000 men? Because when a man speaks, the whole family moves. Why do you think God is moving men now in this season? Because the headship has been substituted with leadership. And so what happens is you can't think, you can't see, you can't take initiative because the vision is in the head, the hearing is in the head. So you can't hear God because you just want to be a leader. You are not your, the husband of your wife. You are the head of your wife. So she can't submit to you if you have no mission, men. That's what submission is all about. I'm under a mission, not under a husband. Okay. <laughs> I like the way Roger said, Roger was only 19 at the time. And when I said we're getting married, Roger asked, what mission do you have? And I said, no, I just love you, honey, man. I, I tell you, I love you. I really love you. She said, no, I'm just asking, what do I submit to? I said, me, my love for you. <laughs> she said, no. Didn't God give you a purpose? What is that purpose? And then she says this, I'm going to do everything in my ability to make the purpose of God in your life a reality. And that's when I said to her, tell me what you were born for. And I will make 100% sure that you never live as if when you met me, I suppress you. But if I didn't meet you, you'd be standing up on pulpits preaching and I would still also say amen. But because we're living in a world where there are male and female in our head, we don't understand a family. Women get up and cut bread and do what they have to do without us being intimidated. But because we got this one scripture that says the woman must be silent in the church. But they make the most noise at home. <laughs> What? <laughs> My wife says a woman had the last say. <laughs> God says, Eve, what have you done? And that was it. Adam was quiet after that. <laughs> the reason why we take one scripture, we don't understand that in the synagogue, women sat on the top out of the balcony while men did worship. They could be knitting, they could be doing anything up there. And while the husband gets up to talk to all the Levitical priesthood, and we are reading the scrolls, the wife of the woman at the top will say, I wish you can say that stuff at home like you're standing here. And that Paul would say, go ask your husband at home. I will not allow a woman to talk here. Because it was derogatory statements. But we read it with English mindsets and we kill two thirds of the body of Christ. We destroyed the voice of two thirds. And when we find that two-thirds is that two-thirds that are voiceless that's in the house of God and those who have a voice are at home. Oh, my goodness, Jesus, that came out very strong. <laughs> because I'm part of that one-third. <laughs> Just be gracious, please, Lord. So the guys get persecuted. What does the church do? They go into a place of prayer, the second wave. And in the second wave, it's not tongues and interpretation. It's boldness of the word. So they get up with boldness to speak the word of God. And what was the first wave is now being encouraged with the second wave that everybody could speak the word of God. You know what we've lost? It's not everybody in the body of Christ that can speak the word of God with this boldness. We need that to be restored. We must move away from opinions of men to revelation that this is what God says. What does the Word of God say? What does the Word say? Look at Acts chapter 17 verse 11. Acts chapter 17 verse 11. <laughs> the Bible says these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the Word with all readiness and search the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. 
Now we just accept every YouTube message. And then you just come with a tube and there's no you. <laughs> Empty stuff. Listen, if you've never prayed for the dead to be raised, don't force us to pray with you for your father when he dies. Because it's not your culture. You have no faith to raise the dead. But now daddy dies. It's such a self-centered thing. God wants him to come home. Apostle, can't you come and just pray for my father? I know he died prematurely. Really, you all of a sudden have an ear for God. You've never got up once in church just to say, I'm leading a, a life group. But you want life in this group. <laughs> That's what people do. They think, it's, they think it's cheap. Brother, they prayed 10 days before the Holy Ghost came. And I'm talking 24-7. I'm not talking about let's pray from 5 o'clock till 6 o'clock. They stayed in there because of fear. But when the second wave came, every man, every woman in the house of God was a woman of boldness and a man of boldness. So if you never saw Peter and you saw me, it was just as powerful. Because I will share what the Word says and I will search the Scriptures to determine if this is what the Word says. Because God watches over His Word to perform it. He doesn't watch over my quotes. He doesn't watch over my experiences. He watches over His Word to perform it. And when you give your life into something, what of God's Word is in your action? So that if the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand. So the third wave of the Spirit, you know what God does? God shoves the power from the pulpit to the deacons. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's not Peter rising up. It's Stephen and Philip. And when these two boys rise up, they were just in giving food. Oh yes, they were just giving food out. Have the anointing of the, of the Holy Ghost upon them. And then... Stephen shakes just as much as Peter would have shaken. What is God doing? He comes with the next wave to show the importance of the power in the pews. That's why you notice something with the early church at 3,000 people. They were not economically strong enough to shake Jerusalem yet. Then God brings 5,000 men. And their whole economy shifts. And they start shaking. Imagine you have in less than, <laughs> less than four years, you have 8,000 people. Uh -huh. And it takes you 10 minutes to baptize 3,000. How? Because there's 120 in the upper room and the cleaning baths in Jerusalem is hundreds of them. On the day that the temple is going to celebrate the feast of Pentecost. They're going to celebrate that there's thousands of Jews in Jerusalem and there's hundreds of washing baths, uh, baths there. So when they get saved, 120 people, each one just take 30 people. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> 10 minutes later, 3,000 is baptized. Why? Because everybody was baptized. Now this new theology comes. You must be a fairy, you must be a pastor in order to baptize these people. Really, where does it say so in the Bible? Search the scriptures so that you can know the mind of God. You can baptize your son at home, here at home. Don't wait for somebody. I mean, I tried to get baptized after I came out of Satanism. And I think these people took long, man. Because they don't understand. I didn't understand baptism at the time. But one thing I do know is baptism tells you you left a kingdom for another kingdom. Oh yes, you can't go back to Egypt if you come through the Red Sea. God closed it up on all those boys. And for you. When you went through like us, nicely on dry ground. <laughs> and He closed it behind you. That means you can't also go back and they can't come through. So He doesn't just get you out. He kills the folks that had influence over you. He destroys that whole generation. He takes it out of the equation so that when you look back, 
there is no threat of what's behind you because he's the same today yesterday and forever he is the same God that's why when you want your freedom don't wait for somebody to say go forward let them pray for you you get up out of your own and you find your freedom you come with the power of God to say God it's not about them it's about me I want my freedom I said I'm going to stop by the by the fourth wave the fifth wave <laughs> brought 14 other apostles <laughs> plus prophets big time brother so in all of a sudden we have a school of prophets rising up that nobody knew by name oh man did you notice how we opposed the grace gifts of God in our time? You know why? You don't know the wave of the Spirit. How can they still be apostles today? Really? There were 26 after Jesus left. Because you don't know the wave of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost makes you an overseer over the flock of God. He doesn't make the flock of God an overseer over Him. He chooses the team. But look at this. <laughs> so when the third wave come, the shift from Apostle to Stephen, Philip, watch how God goes to go with me to Acts chapter 8. And we'll stop here because you have a boss that's waiting for you tomorrow. And if you are not, if you don't have a boss and you are the boss, they waiting for you. But the fourth wave, <laughs> you see the fourth wave, let me go there. So we have the shift of the Holy Ghost and then the fourth wave comes with a wave of deliverance, a very powerful thing. You know what deliverance does? It shows you the weakness of your devil. But the absence of deliverance shows you and makes you think he is a lion when he's not. That's why the absence of deliverance makes God people testify more about the devil than they testify about Jesus. I can't understand these people. I don't know why the church talks such a lot about the devil. Do you know how much you talk about him without us having to be there? You know, the devil again was busy in my life. The devil again was in my business. The devil again, you talk about him more than we talk about him at church. But when you come to church and we educate you as to who he is and what he does, you get freaked out. Just like you get freaked out with money. Because money is the devil's God. Yeah, it's, it, mammon comes from him. There's not one rand or cent that God created. It's all man-made. What is God's economy? Is silver and gold. It's God's economy. We have man-made rands and cents. And we get depressed and we call it economic depression. <laughs> in any case, that's because you are not in Christ. You are in Adam. One day I'll come we'll talk about the church in Adam and the church in Christ. But nevertheless, in Acts chapter 8, let's go there show you something let's go to verse 1 and now as they spoke <laughs> no Acts chapter 8 never listen verse 1 says now Saul was consenting to his death at that time a great persecution arose against the church which was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles you see what God does with persecution? He spreads us into Kruger's door. <laughs> and then you think, oh Jesus, do we have the money for this? No, I will make a way where there seems to be no way. And then while you're in, in Kruger's door, the persecution gets intense and he shifts you to Cape Town with not even thinking who's going. He's already sent somebody. So now you have Stefan there. And then while you're still thinking about the persecution, he scatters you into the United States. No, he's in charge, folk. I promise you. And so persecution precedes prayer. And prayer precedes power. 
That's why if you are prayerless, just because somebody didn't bless your business, bless your marriage, and you don't pray, you are leaving the power of the enemy to continue. But persecution is not demon possession. Persecution is people don't like you. That's opposition. And opposition simply means your position is being opposed. And your position is God placed you there. So if He's in charge, He can separate us, move us wherever He wants to. He said right in the beginning, He said, listen, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. And then you get used to centurion. Oh, this is so nice. This is lovely. It's like I'm in the drop-in. And in the drop-in, we have people come from the filling stage. They're still standing and throwing petrol in and they get delivered downstairs there. Then the guy leaves his car and the filling station comes up screaming, crying. I need Jesus. Muslims, Hindus, everybody come up here from... Because the presence of God is not Hindu. The presence of God is not Muslim. The presence of God is God. And He will change people the way He wants to. So they come up and we're having a glorious time. We start church in the drop-in at 5, which was a nightclub. 5 o'clock, we're in there. We come out of there 2 o'clock in the morning. Because when the presence of God comes in, the program ends. The program ends, but the presence will continue. I promise you. Now we have this outpouring so wonderful. Can't we just stay here? It's like that man in Mark chapter 5. Jesus, can't I just hang out with you after you cast out all these devils? And Jesus says, no, go home. Go tell your family the compassion God had on you. Go tell them. That's what it's all about. Tell somebody what I've done. The same man that came out of Gadara was the prophetic fulfillment of the word of God to the tribe Gad. I will make sure that you will put your, your foot, you will have an overcoming. You will come through a tough time, but you will overcome. That was the prophetic word from a father to 12 sons. And Jesus remembered that there in Gadarene, there's a man in the graveyard. And he brings that man out of the graveyard. And that man, after he comes out of the graveyard of persecution, meets Jesus. He then preaches in 10 cities, the Decapolis. He goes into 10 cities and out of those 10 cities come a woman who touches the hem of his garment, healed of a bleeding problem. And so when you look at God, you just don't know what he can do with you. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter what you've gone through. When he comes, he will remember the prophetic word. He will remember that there was a word that says, you shall receive power, but you're gonna go from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts. And then the Holy Ghost is actually saying, seem like they don't want to leave here. But Jesus says we must go to Judea. So he allows persecution. And all of a sudden he fulfills Jesus' next move. Let's go to Judea and Samaria. So what does he send? He doesn't send the apostles there. He sends you there. <laughs> we will stay in this place of comfort for a while. <laughs> Lastly, and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Now watch this. <laughs> Stephen is being buried. Saul is making havoc of the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's entering every house. This is Saul. This unlikable choice. Goes into your house, you're having a life group. He kicks the hell out of you in your life group. And he feels good about it. He creates havoc. And then, he, nobody knows that this is Paul. This is still Saul, brother. Do you know what nonsense you and I caught on when we were still in the flesh? <laughs> the next move, Prophet Leon... <laughs> In the next move, we face sorcerers and witches. That's why deliverance. So there's a sorcerer who thinks he can compare himself and the satanic power with the Holy Ghost. 
and Simon the sorcerer comes into the fourth wave. Whereas where were they in the first wave? We couldn't take them until the administration of God was ready. The temple need to be set. The fire must be in place. And then go out there. I remember the story of T.L. Osborne when I was just young saved I read every book you can think of of what God did with people because I've never seen my grandfather encouraged me not to go to church because there's no evidence of God in it he was stuck in the Luciferian doctrine and then he would ask me when you were at church did anybody weep what did the preacher say I say well fishing for Jesus and he says, no, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking that somebody weep to reflect the presence of the one they're talking about. And I said, no. He said, no, Jesus is a dead Jew. So don't waste your time with religion. And when you go to school, don't waste your time with the teacher. Get the principal and you'll have the school. Don't waste your time with families. Take the husband and you have the family. Now he's educating me to be demonic. And then I grow up and I cause havoc. Because now you ask Christians about what does the word say? Now they can't even quote the scripture. So I said, no, next time you talk to me and I find, just tell me what did he say? And you know what? I then decided after I, I found that Jesus is an enemy to the satanic movement, I must find out who he is, what kind of people he uses, and how does he economically support them. So I, I visit churches. So I come into churches and I see people chewing bubble gum when there's a place of prayer. Um, and like, hi, the man is praying. You know, when, when, when you lose the reverence of God, <laughs> you notice something, I walk into the meeting, I'm just focused. You can go to Jerusalem and we can be standing like this in the synagogue or in the temples. You can walk right here, we don't see you. We are not focused on you. We are focused on the one we are addressing. So it doesn't matter. So when I go to Jerusalem, I pray in tongues by the wall. I go to the synagogue. I pray also there. It's my quiet time. And we just pray. I've been at Mount Hebron. And I go into Abraham's area. And they ask me, can't I pray over Sodom and Gomorrah, the previous historical journey. And they put my feet into the footprints of Abraham. And they says, we want you to stand in the footprints of Abraham. And I want you to pray that God will bring the world into his kingdom. And I say, Rabbi, there's no way a Muslim will become a Jew. But he will become a Christian. The Messiah is the only one that can unite the world. No religious leader can do that. Jesus is the Messiah and the Messiah is Jesus. Nobody can do that. So paraphrasing, we get to a sorcerer, which just rises up. And guess what? Our people visit witches in the season. Go and sit with fortune tellers. Go and sit with things like Tiablara. In the place of God, man. Why? Because of the absence of the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost in the house of God makes the church religious. And so people go and find their solution in other places but the church. But when it comes to the sorcerer's problem, listen. We don't have to worry. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word, verse 14 said, they sent Peter and John to them. When they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Then Peter addresses this guy. Now, <laughs> apostle, Neville, now you must say it nicely. <laughs> the witches get saved. Because in the house of God, there's an apostolic prophetic grace that wants you to have your freedom. So we take the pressure when it comes. But look at this. They say that we, we can't expect, I don't know why they call it astral projection in our kingdom. Prophet Leon, these people are so backward. 
I'm busy in preaching in a revival in Samaria. Right? And then I need to bring a whole nation into our kingdom because we must still go to the uttermost parts, isn't it? So the Holy Ghost comes and says, no, now that I got them in Judea and Samaria, let me take them to Ethiopia. Uttermost parts. So the Holy Ghost takes a man of God, a deacon, takes him physically out of Samaria and transports him to a desert in Gaza. Do you know how far that is? 173 kilometers. No, 700 kilometers. It's like me being in PE and the Holy Ghost says, I'm taking you quickly to Cape Town and back tomorrow. And it doesn't bother me if all the airlines are bankrupt. <laughs> and I leave this place of celebration, revival, demons are being manifesting and great joy is going to come into the city. Amen. But now I tell you something, because we are so far from God, we don't think the Holy Ghost is the same Holy Ghost that moved in the book of Acts. He's moving in Centurion. He's moving in Krugersdorf. He is moving in the States. He's moving in Southern North. Every part of the world, it's the same Holy Spirit. But because we don't know His power, we make satanic activity the authentic. Hello. So whatever the devil does is more authentic than what the Holy Ghost can. But you know why? You don't know him. So you question his activities. Imagine. This doesn't just happen in the book of Acts. John G. Lake. Ah, oh, you see persecution, prayer, and power. Don't go get 10 lawyers to fight your persecution. Get to God, the advocate in Christ. Why? John G. Lake is here in Johannesburg praying. And while he's praying in the meeting, the Holy Ghost takes him out of the meeting, takes him to the UK, to a mental asylum. He walks into the mental asylum and he breaks the chains of a young boy's request in the prayer meeting. My grandmother has a mental problem. In the prayer meeting in Johannesburg, the Holy Ghost takes him out of the prayer meeting in Johannesburg, takes him to the UK, and the chains break on the woman they tied onto this bed. And she gets delivered in the UK while he is physically in Johannesburg. And when that chains break, the message comes back from the family to say, Grandma is healed, something happened. What was that all about? Let me tell you. It's the same Holy Spirit. Because we believe in satanic people talking about astral projection, we forget it's the fraudulent experience of the power of God. We forget the fraudulent is not what we are doing. We are the original of God. That's why it's not the first time that this will happen. When Israel wanted to fight a battle, the king of the enemy would say, how, does they, how do they know what we are going to do? And somebody said, there's a prophet in Dothan that knows what the king will do. He's in your bedroom. He knows what you will do. You must never allow the demonic to become the authentic. Authentic. Because the authentic is the Holy Ghost and all his gifts. And that's what God is about to do with you in this next wave. That's why, <laughs> prophet, <laughs> they worried about us. We can't help it, right? This is our, our platforms. Somebody gets delivered of a demon in the street. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> you must all get to that level. <laughs> Where you see somebody manifest in the street. Because we're so used to it, it can happen only at church. Jesus cast out devils in the street, man. And don't let this theology get to you. Please take the children, put them in the back room. This devil will just now go into them. Who taught you that? <laughs> let me tell you something. If that was the truth, Jesus would all run the whole day after the same devil because you gave that devil power to go into anybody. 
Imagine he says, come out unclean spirit. He says, Peter, just keep it here. There he goes there. Uh, come out of him. Uh, John, just keep this guy. Let me just go there. He'll be a whole day busy running after the same demon. What is the difference? Every devil, even Father God, needs your permission to enter your life. God doesn't force his way. He knocks at the door. Then, and the only reason why he knocks at the door is because there's sin in your house. That scripture's got nothing to do with unsaved people. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. When a Jewish door is closed, that means the father is busy dealing with sin in his family. And Jesus says to the father in Revelation with John, he says, tell them, I'm going to stand at the door. What door? The door of the church. I want to stand at the door of the church. If they open up, tell that angel, I will help him to solve my problem. I'll come in and sup with him. I'll come in and have fellowship with him. Lloyd, you know that scripture that says, and the violent take it by force, because that's where the wave of deliverance is. The violent take it by force. You know what we do? We come and we think we must address God violently. In the name of Jesus. And God is also saying, you look like the people you want to deliver. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, we, we address God like it. My granddaughter asked me one day, Pa, is it still you when you talk to God? She goes, I've never seen you like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just upset, my baby. But what does it mean? You must go read the book of Micah sometime. When Jesus talks about the violent take it by force, he's not talking about me addressing heaven. He's talking about a shepherd who has a crawl, brings the sheep in at night, puts the sheep into the crawl, and in the crawl there is only one opening through which the sheep can see the shepherd. And when he closes up that whole area, the sheep is looking through that opening, sees the shepherd, and Jesus says, they violently storm that opening to have the presence of the shepherd. So they're not fighting for victory, they're fighting for the presence of the shepherd to be in the house of God. They're coming to say, if he is not going to be with us, our whole night without him will mean nothing. So the hole is too small for all of them to go through. So everybody who is hungry enough for God finds the hole because I want the shepherd. I don't want the sheep only. I want the shepherd. And when the shepherd's in the house, what happens to a city? Great joy. I said to you in the, in the room, prophet. <laughs> I said to you, what was the thing that described my visit this time? I couldn't get the word. I know there was a devil that rocked up in my place today <laughs> after leaving here. But we sorted him out. That's fine. I do not fear them that can destroy the body, but him who has rights over my body and my spirit. <laughs> you see, one of the things that moves me is the following. <laughs> never, never allow. When I ask the Lord, how do I describe what I saw in these two days? And he said to me, this afternoon. And I knew that devil will show up at some time. And the feeling's mutual. I show up just to make sure all his works don't go unchallenged. I'm graced for that. So I head into my room. I told prophet. <laughs> my whole body goes into spasms. And I'm checking. You know, my mind just goes, no, this is nonsense. And ooh, even when I came out of the car with Ruche, I'm thinking, what is this, man? And it's all tight. And I then go that natural route. It's age, Neville. Really. The older we get, the muscles are getting tired, man. You know, I go through. You know what I did? Naturally, I go fill the bath with water, hot water. 
I climb into that hot water. I lay my body in it. Get this muscles right. It doesn't change. That devil thought, carry on trying natural means. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, this is how the spirit world works. You say, give me your bottle. Yeah, no, give me your bottle. I show you something. Let's say I come to you. I come from the kingdom of darkness. This is the stuff I'm throwing over you, right? I throw it over you. When I come as a man of God and I say, you will never ever again have access to the life of Lloyd ever. You know what happens? When he leaves, he takes his goods with him. And then all of a sudden you don't have this problem anymore because the one who brought the problem has to leave with the problem. That's why when Jesus speaks, that's why when Jesus says, how is it that this daughter of Abraham, who is a child of Abraham, a seed of Abraham, how is it that she can have an infirmity for so many years and you are more worried whether I do this on the Sabbath day. But when he says spirit of infirmity, you will let her go now. He has to take the infirmity with him and leave and the woman that was bent comes up straight. Why? Because the demonic world are persons. The Holy Ghost is my example. The Holy Ghost is a person. The realm of the Spirit have disembodied persons who need to have a body to manifest their junk. That's why prophet never allow the persecution to stop us from casting out devils, to stop us from bringing people into their freedom, to stop us today. I want you to stand to your feet and give God the glory, give Him all the honor, give Him all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. There is nobody like you. Holy Spirit, just wave of deliverance <laughs> will come mightily, 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 many, many, many <laughs> will be set free, God. Many, <laughs> many will be set free in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. <laughs> So remain standing in this atmosphere. We're going to break. Remember I said we're in Christ. We're just going to elevate for a moment. The Bible says in verse 4 of Acts chapter 8. Therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. That's the first thing the Lord said I must trust God for. Every one of us study the word and go preach the word. Share it with friends. Bring them their freedom. Why can't all of you be carriers of the gift of miracles? Mm -hmm. And bring freedom into people's lives. The Bible says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. And what did he preach there? Christ. The message of the early church is that Jesus is the Messiah, not the Savior. He's the Messiah who saves. He's the King who delivers. Amen. And the moment that revelation gets into your spirit, you will not look for another John. Because there is no other. He is the answer for all things. You look at him and he looks at you, but he doesn't just look at you. He will look after you. He will care for you. That his shadow on your life, Peter, will deliver people from demons. Just the shadow. What is the shadow? It's a reflection of the reality that's on you. Oh yes. Listen. <laughs> and the multitudes, say with me multitudes, with one accord, say it, heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Now hold it. The next move in this wave of deliverance are going to have multitudes enter these premises. You're not going to be able to count them. 
Let me tell you something. That's why God had the first wave to make sure there's an administration that will care for the multitudes when they come. Notice something. The next move doesn't talk about 3,000 that came. The next move doesn't talk about 5,000 that came. The next move talks about multitudes. The wave of God will bring multitudes into the kingdom of God at a time such as this. Why? Because everybody is going to preach the word. Who is the word? Jesus is the living word. He is the living word. Preach Christ to them and multitudes with one accord. Why did they come? Why did they come? Verse 7, for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed. That's why they came. The gift of miracles is the reflection of what you see here every Sunday that has happened. The Holy Ghost comes with the gift of miracles to cast out devils. Through prophets, always keep them in prayer. Because there's nothing that will stop the move of God like an inside job. Sinners won't stop this. Saints will be used by the enemy. You know why? Because your fire is not everybody's blessing. Your fire makes other people feel they're not where they're supposed to be with God. And it can offend them. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice. So folk, when there's manifestations of the devil, it's not going to be quiet. I mean, demons were the first personalities that said to Jesus, we know who you are. Go read it in the book of Mark. We are still trying to find out who he is. Demons who come out of that realm says you are the Holy One of God. We are still saying, is He really the only way? Is He really the truth? Is there no maybe some other way? Brother, this is not the post office. You can get anywhere to the post office. But heaven is different. Heaven has got only one way up here. Without Christ, you're not going to get there. Now listen. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed. And now listen, when the devils leave, paralysis goes. And many who were paralyzed <laughs> and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. What is, what, is, what, is, what is the word really saying? The word is saying, when you get rid of these devils, the paralysis has to leave with them. When you get rid of these devils, the people that are lame will start walking because these demons must leave with the product of paralysis and being lame. This thing that your business is being taken out, when that devil comes with that spirit of poverty, try to make you feel you're not good enough. When you let him go, all of a sudden, God has made a way where there seems to be no way. All of a sudden, God has turned your wilderness into an oasis. All of a sudden, because unless you take Jesus seriously, after the resurrection, what does he say? Go and preach the gospel to all of creation. That's where we start. And then he says, those who are baptized, believe in are baptized. And then he says, in my name, these signs shall follow you. And the first thing he says is not get healed. He says, in my name, cast out devils. He doesn't say, in my name, get rich. He says, in my name, cast out devils. Because devils have kept your money. Devils have kept your healing. Devils have kept your family. Devils have kept your progress. And when you get rid of the thief, you can have the goods that he tried to steal. Now let me help you with something. Yes. Remember that scripture that says, if the devil stole just want to add one more thing to the ministries around there. When the devil steals something from me, and the Bible says he must restore seven times, I don't take the restoration that comes from him without cleaning it up with the blood. Because it comes out of contamination. Are you with me? But he will restore seven times. I don't care if the devil has to deliver what God wants me to have. I don't care who the delivery boy is. Just bring back my stuff. 
Just bring back my stuff. Just put my stuff back where it has to be. I give God the glory. Just bring back my stuff. This is my stuff. This is what belongs to me. My wife belongs to me. My children belongs to me. My income belongs to me. Just leave my stuff alone. Unclean spirits go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus, unclean spirits go now. In Jesus' mighty name, we command you to let God's people go now. Give God a praise offering. Those on the stream, receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. Paralysis go. Lameness go. Sickness and disease leave. Spirit of infirmity, take your goods and go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus, receive the glory, receive all the honor. This wave that is in this house will continue and bring a new generation of Holy Ghost filled, fire filled men and women of God. Men Christ, the Son of the living God, and they preached Christ. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Why? Devils have to go. I want those of us that might feel resistance to what God wants you to have. We're going to trust God to break that devil's power. Amen. You come, don't worry. You know, you could be in the meeting and you could feel, hey, Lord, there's something not right here. It's a sign, just leave that something that's not right. Leave it out of your life. I want you to come up here quickly. Those who need prayer, just come. Those, those who know that God wants to break some stuff. The Spirit of the living God will bring great joy, great joy. Let these devils go, Lord, that try to stop your people from living in the power of your might. We give you the glory. We give you all the honor. Everybody else, just pray in the Spirit. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. We are just going to trust God for you. Prophet, we're just going to believe God for God's people. Amen. Every unclean spirit, every devil assigned to these dear ones, your time is up. Your time is up in the name of Jesus. Your time is up. Rebecca Satanda, those that are up in the front, just pray in the spirit. Trust God right now. Bye. 
mightily, mightily. Let him go. Let him go. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Let him go. Let him go. And forgiveness go. Bitterness go. In the mighty name. Hey. Yesterday has no power over tonight. In Jesus' name. and bind it. Lust is not about just sexual perversion. Lust is about an unhealthy desire obsessed to make you more important than Jesus. Loosen and tied by the fire of God. Let them go. Let them go. You know, there's somebody, there was a young lady here. Where's the young ladies that were here? Are they in the prayer line somewhere? I didn't see them. No. Are they there? Pardon? Are they in the prayer line? All right. Everybody keep praying, keep praying. The blood of the Lamb, release them. Release them. Go, go. Griba seketa, go, go, go. In Jesus' name, it's your freedom tonight. It's your freedom. It's your freedom. It's your freedom, son. It's your freedom. Go, go, go. In Jesus' name, let them go. Let them go. Ripa Let him go now. All this stuff, let it go. Let it go. In the name of Jesus, today. Today, the greatness of God be manifested over your life. Over your life. Go, go. Unclean stuff. Go, go. Unclean stuff. Go. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. We give you the glory, Master. Jesus, 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 King of glory, King of glory, go, go, every devil, go, 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 now, now, loose, sir, loose and untied, go, go in Jesus' name, loose, loose in the name of Jesus, get out, get up, get out in Jesus' name, nobody, Nobody has more power than the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, things that have happened in your past will not have authority over you no more. It's over. It's over. The life of God breaks chains. You both your eyes. Baba Boriosa Karabarianda. Devils, go, go, go. Bring her back. Bring her back. Every devil go, go, in the name of Jesus. Bring her back. Look at me. What was wrong with your eyes? You couldn't see afar? Can you see people there? Where? There? Come walk with me. Come, come, come quickly. Come. 
Just walk with me. How close are you now? Can you see them now in the darkness? Huh? Are they clear? How beautiful are some people and how ugly are the others? Are they all beautiful? Okay. Because God makes all things beautiful in His time, right? Now you can see them, right? Come now a little bit back. Can you see him? Right? Can you see this man there? What color shirt has he got on? You can choose any one of them. They're all cool men. The floral one and the, and the puma next to him. You can read the puma, right? Were you able to read this far? No. Yes or no? no? No, you couldn't read this far. And you can see them now. Uh-huh. All right. Can you see that young man there? No. There by the lady. There's a lady here right next to the man with the floral. There's a lady next to him. Yeah, Go to Right. Let's come back. Come back. Just here. No, no. Just here. Father, oh, I see what I'm seeing. Yeah. Now, let me teach you something. Never agree with sickness and disease. Jesus never agrees with it. Jesus never says, I see you blind. Because if he agrees with it, it's not leaving. Because whatsoever things we agree upon as touching, it shall be done. Just teaching you something. You never, from now on, you declare that I have an impediment, but it's not mine. For by his stripes, we are healed. That, that, that thing that was there is going to leave you tonight. And like I did with you, walk up there, your eyes have become lazy. Right? I'm just going to give them the strength of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Lift up your hands to the Lord. This devil, take your goods. Take your goods now. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. In the name of Jesus, everybody just pray in the Spirit. All unclean spirits, go, go, go. Release by the fire of God. Go, go in Jesus' name. <laughs> That's what the lady had to see is you, man. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, let him go. Let her go now. In Jesus' mighty name, your mind be cleansed by the blood of the Lamb and the power of the Holy Ghost come mightily upon you. The Lord has shown me there's going to be a mighty prayer. Warrior rising up in you. In the name of Jesus, it shall be done. Every unclean spirit, go. Go, spirits of darkness, go. Go now, now in Jesus' name, go. Go in the name of Jesus. Break every power. Destroy that stronghold. Let her go. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Rebecca Satara Bosha Karamanda Etelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelel
You see, you were sitting there or somewhere, right? Were you sitting there? Let me tell you something. God doesn't like sharing His temple with nobody. God is a jealous God. He's not going to share you with everybody. No devil out of the pit of hell is going to make this their temple. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are already looking better. You look good. Father, in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, indwell this temple with your power, your might, and I pint, pint every spirit in the name of Jesus. Let her go now, now, now. Be loosed and untied. Be loosed in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Let her go. Everybody just pray. Just pray. Don't worry about her. Just pray. In the name of Jesus. Go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Father. Nobody like you. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Break every chain. Destroy every stronghold. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Destroy these strongholds. In the name of Jesus, these strong men go. Go. Go, go, in Jesus' mighty name, go, go. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, yes. Holy fire of Jesus. Holy, holy fire of God. Wow, this is so beautiful. I want you, listen, I want you to see the man in, Acts, in, in Mark chapter 5. He has got many demonic problems, but he comes to God in worship life. That's all I want you to do and watch your freedom. Amen. I just want to, let me tell you, every one of these things in our lives is created for His glory. So all I want you to do is just cool. We're not against you. No, no, no. The men will tell you, I've got skills. <laughs> and I'm a nightmare to that devil. <laughs> because I will not allow him to take my daughter captive. Amen. Amen. Come hug me. Come on. Jesus, 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 King of Glory, let her go now. Go, go. Jesus, wow, wow, lift your hands to the Lord. Every unclean spirit go that has been assigned, said to her, I bind your power, loosen and untied, loosen and untied. In Jesus' name, go, 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 get out, go. Every unclean spirit, you will have no say, go, go. Jesus name in Jesus name get out get out in the name of Jesus get out go in Jesus name go in the name of Jesus go hey now go go in Jesus name get out get out go go in Jesus name no unclean spirit will touch your life son go in the name of Jesus, let them go. Can you give God a praise offering right where you are? Hey. Jesus, King of glory, every unclean spirit, you will have no authority or power, You're not in this house, not in this house. This is the house of the Holy Ghost. 
in the name of Jesus loose her loose her and tie her and tie her go go in Jesus name in the name of Jesus let her go let her go 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 in the name of Jesus let her go let her go let her go now hey shekata toro boshakata rebeka la bondo out of your innermost being here life of God remove every other form of godliness in the name of Jesus the Christ the goodness of God is upon you loosen and tied by God let this devil know that you have power let this devil know <laughs> that you are you are God's son full of the power of God loosen and tied Untie her! Untie them! In the name of Jesus! Your glory! Fill them, God! Fill them! Riposha takata! Rosha katata! Rebesa teleleleho! In Jesus' name! Untie them! Hey! Untie them! This is gonna be a great 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 moment in this church <laughs> in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Messiah the King we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus mighty name everybody give God some more praise give him praise Spirit of the living God, loose her and tie her. Holy Ghost, take her. Take them, take them. If I, by the Spirit of God, Jesus, release them for greater things. Release them and tie them for your glory. And tie them, and tie them, Master. Now, now, now. Jesus, King of glory, loose him for your glory. It's the glory of God now. This is the waves of God. It's the glory of God. Look at me. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's wonderful. I like your top. Uh, you like Spider-Man. Uh, I love you. Is that okay? Lift your hands to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Your presence fill her. This prophetess will rise up. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, is this not a brand plucked out of the fire? Oh, Jesus, King of glory, let your kingdom come. You next. You made of stars. Huh? Come here, sweetheart. Come to me. Come to me. Put your hands on her head. Just there. Father, in Jesus' name, that the anointing that destroys every bondage come mightily upon this generation. This generation. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Sir, this is the next generation, but you are not over. Listen, look at me quickly. Don't be deceived about generations. A generation is everybody living in that dispensation of time. That's why a generation is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 120 years of vision is locked up in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when Jesus starts his church, he starts his church with Peter, James, John. Peter means rock, small rock, steadfast. James means prayer life, won't leave God until. John means grace of God, which simply means that if you wanted to remove the vision, you had to take 120 years of vision from Peter, James, and John. But because that vision cannot be removed, we are here today because of them, carriers of the glory. You see, your, this is your daughter next to you. Lift your hands to the Lord. You're going to be around to see God use her 
for his glory. Abraham saw Isaac, Abraham and Isaac saw Jacob. In Jesus' name, no devil is going to upset this destiny in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. This young man be released for your glory. Be released. Every unclean spirit, go, go, go. Everybody give God praise. Come on. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Is this your family? Your son? Yes, my son. And daughter? Right? How are you? I, I think you're looking cool for me. Are you also cool? I'm not going to roar like a lion. You know what I mean? Jesus is going to touch all of you. For his glory amen keep your hands up this is the gentleness of the spirit of the living god father i want to thank you in the name of jesus there's something happening here how old are you you're nine years old and you like this okay how old are you 10 so you're going this way okay this there you're going this way so you five you nine, you ten, you twelve. Just hold it for a moment. You are five, and he's nine, that's fourteen. That's the Messiah's presence right here. Are you with me? You are ten, and you are? This is the divine responsibility of God to take apostolic order to another level. Are you with me? Now, if I take all of you, 5 plus 9 is 14, 14 plus 10 is 24. Up till this point, it's the glory of God. Okay? And you are 12, so 24 plus is how much? 36. So this 3 plus 6 is 9. And this 9 over here means God has got a double anointing of the Holy Ghost in this house right now. Okay, so it's 36 still here. How old are you, sir? I'm telling you, 52 you, you sound like a young man. Because only young people turn. You're turning 32. You don't want to be 31. Uh, oh, you're turning 52, okay. In October. <laughs> Let me explain something. Right here is the message of the Holy Ghost. That's why when I pray for you, Watch God take divine responsibility. Watch God put things that are out of order. He put it into order. Watch the Holy Ghost take the nine gifts of the Spirit and impart it across the house. You're going to grow up to see it. And the number five is the fivefold ministry of the kingdom. The ministry of grace. Lift your hands to Jesus. I'm going to pray for Daddy last. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I break every unclean spirit's assignment against these dear ones now. Now, in the name of Jesus the Christ, I destroy its power. In Jesus' name, this messianic anointing of the Holy Ghost that will come upon these children, raise up a new standard. Everybody in the building say with me, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. In the name of Jesus, sir, your, your age is 52. And that means the number seven means holiness and righteousness. It's the number that expresses not just perfection, but it's a number that expresses the sadiq means it's the righteous ones, the holy ones. God is about to bring into this house a different level of his glory, his holiness and it looses you, looses me in the name of Jesus. Go around daddy, go around him. In Jesus' name, receive what God has just done. Receive every unclean spirit. Go, release them for your glory. Release them for your glory, God. Now by your grace, my goodness, to see these children Loosen and tie. Let them go. Let them go. For great service in God. Let them go now. Go. Every assignment of the enemy. Let them go. Every assignment. Go. 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 In Jesus.
Jesus' name. <laughs> Lord God Almighty, God Almighty, you receive the glory, receive the honor. Jesus, hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord. Come on. Come on. I just want you to clap your hands. Come on. Clap your hands. Here we go. Here we go. This is a worshiping generation. Yes, yes. Now lift your hands to Jesus. Receive the fire of God. Son, wait, 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 wait. What's your name? What's your name? Say for me. Aiden, hold it right there. How old are you? So you see, that other buddy is also nine. That's why I'm stopping you. You nine. And he's nine. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful part is, the number, all of them was 36. So God can't say it three times and I don't believe him. He's saying three times, the gifts of the Holy Ghost is going to be released in the house. Amen. And you know your name? Aiden. The first letter, I, I, I'm a, you must teach me to spell, okay? Does it start with an A? Like, like an A. Okay? And does it end with an N? Like my name. The N in my name, Neville means blessed one. Alright? Now let me explain something to you. Because you, the letter of your name in the beginning is an A, God will always be first in your life. Always. Always. And because the letter at the end is an N, believe me, Jesus will always be the Messiah. It's the throne room experience of the Lord. He's going to raise you up. And everybody's going to check this out. To be a leader and a ruler. You with me? Because you are a carrier of what? How many letters are in your name? It's A, I as well, and D. And A again, E, and N. You got a D in the middle of your name, which means God will open up doors that can never be shut. Never. You will be a door opener for the King of Glory. Now, I'm not asking you to remember all of that. You know what I mean? We're not that brilliant. Eh? But Jesus can make it happen. Because He never forgets. You will always remember that he said it today to you. Lift your hands to the Lord now. You see, your name has got five letters in it, which means God is saying the fivefold grace, the prophetic grace is going to be the priority in this house. And then by the grace of God, the favor of God is going to come upon all of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, with respect, I release him to receive the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Loosed by the grace. Let the grace of God, the favor of God release you. Somebody's still up here. How's it? Wow. I'm just trying to check your top, man. Wow. Is she looking after you or are you looking after her? You looking, of course, of course. Because I see she says she loves to eat fruit every day. Do you also like fruit or, just, or you just want nyama or what? <laughs> you want meat. You don't like meat. You like me. I like to meet people, but I don't like to eat the meat. Okay? 
Now look at this. I want you to put your hands on her. Come on, I'm going to trust God to anoint your sister. All right. You like your sister? Receive the power of God. Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit come mightily, mightily, and He will have a ministry of impartation by the fire of your Spirit. It's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. And to you, what's her name? Azadia. Wow. Really? Is that your name? Hmm? Okay. Give me your hand. Can you give me a high five like that? Yeah, that's it. Keep it there. Jesus, Jesus. She will touch many for your glory. Except you become like a child, you will not intend enter the kingdom of heaven. But right now by your spirit, as children rise up. Isn't it amazing, church, that children, children, wants God, man. Amen. You know when revival starts is when our kids decide, I'm not waiting for mommy to get me to church. I just want Jesus. I just want Jesus. This church is shifting tonight, I'm telling you. It's good to see you again. Lift your hands to the Lord. Father, we bless you. We give you the glory. We give you all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Everybody, keep just, just keep praying. Just keep praying. Spirit of the living God, release her for your glory. The glory of God break yesterday's limitations. This limitations go. These devils that have limited you, their time is over. Their time is over. Their time is over. In the name of Jesus, their time is over. It's over. It's Jesus is our now. Jesus is our. It's over. No more limitations. No more limitations. Let's give Jesus some more praise. Hallelujah to God. Come on, encounter. Let's make some noise. Come on, encounter. If you have received something in this night, raise your hands and give him the best praise offering that you possibly can give. Amen. Let's just stand, <laughs> close our eyes, just raise your hands to heaven as we close the service in prayer. Father, we thank you for every life that you have touched and that you have changed over this weekend. My Lord, we love you. My God, I pray that even as we continue throughout this week, may you bring us into deeper dimensions of worship where we will truly know your hearts and have the ability to manifest nothing but that. Lord, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. In the living name of Jesus Christ, amen. Come on, give him one more praise offering. Amen. Thank you, Encounter. We love you. Stay connected. If you would like to give into this ministry, we have made giving your tithes, seed, or offering as simple and effortless as possible. You can simply log on to EncounterChurch.co.za or LeonDupria.com and click on the Give button. Here we show you the different ways to give. It's so easy. You will find giving options for local or international giving. PayFast is a fast and secure way for South Africans to give. You can give once off or make a recurring donation. Here you will find the Zapper and SnapScan QR codes as a simple and effortless way to scan and give into the ministry. If you prefer to make an electronic transfer, the banking details of our various campuses and the Visionary Fund are also readily available. 
giving internationally, Cash App is one of our fast and simple giving platforms. PayPal is another method for quick and easy giving internationally. You can use your PayPal account or you can give straight from your credit card. DonorBox is also available, which accepts a variety of international giving methods. For those who would like to take hands with us and become a part of the incredible work that God is doing, become a friend and partner of Encounter and Leon Dupria. We have many partnership tiers available to suit your preference. Our friends and partners receive exclusive materials from Leon Dupria, as well as private live streams and exclusive events. Thank you for being part of what God is doing.